Eric Mwad with Mwadha.com. Today let's take a look at a chart here for soybeans. And again, it doesn't matter what instrument we're looking at. Just want to touch on one or two or three aspects of trading here that I don't discuss a lot, but uh, critical sometimes in telling you what's going on in a stock. So today we're going to be looking at backtest. And so, for example, here there was a break in 08. And that break was instrumental in bringing the markets lower. So we can see that. So what we do on the here is just extend this break line here. And you can see that once the market came back, it gave you a reason to expect a pullback. Now, this wasn't a sharp pullback, but at least it did stop the momentum to the upside. So we know that that back test did help. Let's take a look at another back test on this chart. And I've kind of marked them so I don't forget which ones I want to talk about. So you can see this one here. There was a break here in 2011 for this move lower. And the market would come back and test this line again, this time on the underside back test. This happens to be during this period here for the highs right there. And of course, after that, there was a pullback in the stock or at least in the index. There's another back test line that comes in play and it is this line here. Once we broke through here in 2012, the market did go down. But now notice what happens here is if I extend this line this way, you'll notice that every time we hit the line, we have a slight pullback. We hit the line again here and a slight pullback. And then ultimately we hit that line there for a slight pullback. In the current market over the last two, three months, there is a line here, which is the ultimate lows line prior to 2014. And you can see that there was a break. The break in 2014 again here was led to this drop. The market hasn't been back to those levels for the most part. So we extend the same line and you can see that the market has used the same line as a back test failure point for the highs recently here. So that's all good. Now I want to discuss this, this break line here because it wasn't the most, I guess, powerful reversal line. As you can see, even though the market kept touching the line here on back test failures, we ultimately went higher. So what happened there? How come we did not get sharp reversals after hitting those back test points? And I'm talking about this point here, here. What happened? I'm going to give you an idea as to why. Whenever you see a market pullback, but the RSI fails to move below 50. In other words, the market defends this 50 area successfully. More than likely, you are going to make a higher high. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you see a market pull back like it did here, but the RSI never went below 50, it generally tends to indicate that you are going to be testing the highs. As you can see, this is exactly what happened. Eventually, you broke above the highs. So that's one of the reasons. So we can see the reason why that was not the most successful back test line is because during this period, every time it hits this line here and here and even here, so that we're talking about the highs here, here and here, you would have suspected higher levels or higher prices or retest of those highs because the RSI did not move below 50 and that's key. Let's take a look at some negative divergence areas on this chart. Here's the first one. Prices made a higher monthly closing high but we have a lower low here on the RSI and keep in mind this lower lower high lower high on the RSI and this point here was rejection at 69.1 tends to be a good reversal signal. There's also another level where we have a higher high in price, but the RSI did not make a higher high. So that's another area of negative divergence. And we had a pullback of some sorts, as you can see here. And again, we can see that when the market made a higher high here in price, ultimately this led to these lower lows and this lower low, lower highs it's always hard to say that. Anyway, 
This here was also another instant of rejection at 69.1. So another reversal signal there for the highs there. And of course, we saw this pullback. And we can also see that the actual highs, the price highs, came with a, another decline in the RSI. And again, that's another negative divergence. And you can actually even look at this and say that this is close enough to 69.1 visually to indicate a serious pullback. Now, one thing I should point out here before I forget is you can see this is uniform activity rejection at 69.1. Uniform activity rejection at 69.1. Uniform activity rejection again at about 69.1. And then also we can see that if we take all those this negative divergence line here, extend it and extend it again, we can see we come back and get the, this failure point again. So all these things have played out. And also one thing I wanted to point out here is in the period when this chart was moving higher, let's call it over a period of years here, generally speaking, we held above RSI 50 during this period. And even if you look at this point here, this is double bottom support. In other words, this equal distance between this point and this point. Because of equal distance, equal space, it suggests that that is uniform activity below 50 back above it. Hope that makes sense. This is uniform activity below 50 back above it, which means it is good support. And again, all this time period here when the instrument was above 50, you had, a, for the most part, generally a, a, a tendency of moving higher. Now, in the recent late 2015, early 2000, actually, let's call it late from 2014 to some point in early 2016, the RSI was below 50, which corresponds with this generally low period. So put all those things together. Sometimes the chart can give you a lot of insight into which direction one can be leaning or at least looking for swing trades within the broader chart in terms of this long-term monthly chart. Hope all this makes sense. Again, we cover this in many other videos. So it's just looking at other aspects of a stock from various points of view using different instruments. Eric Mwadith, Mwadith.com. As always, good luck, peace and blessings. I am Mwadith.